Hi guys, welcome back. Okay, it's time to tackle what a lot of you have been waiting for, I think. Um, the slider on the top of our uh, magazine layout. This is what we're going to be aiming to do. Um, it's a slider with a few controls. We don't have any left or right controls, although those, those are optional if you want to uh, have a crack at that. And of course, the whole thing is uh, responsive in terms of um, altering to its parent container, which is uh, extremely useful. A lot of jQuery sliders out there in the moment uh, rely on fixed dimensions, which uh, is, of course, pretty awkward uh, in, in flexible surroundings. So uh, one of the first things we need to do is grab a few images. Now, I've already I've already grabbed some uh, from Photodune, and these are they three of these, which I've made uh, 960 wide, just to guarantee that uh, they're wide enough for our um, for our widest layout, for what is currently our widest layout. We'll be talking about that further down the line as well. So uh, just grab those. I'm going to stick those in my images folder. Uh, so that's done. Um, now we're going to use a, a jQuery plugin called Flex Slider. Uh, and actually, when I started uh, started this um, this layout for the first time, uh, you could go to. Let me just grab the URL here. Uh, where are we? Excuse me a second. Mm, here we go. Uh, made by Muffin.com. So you could go there, and uh, and that's where you could grab it. Uh, things have since changed uh, because a week or two ago, WooThemes um, uh, acquired it, bought it, or I'm not exactly sure what the correct terminology there is. But in any case, it's now hosted at uh, WooThemes. It doesn't change anything. Uh, you can still grab it for free, uh, and the support and everything is still uh, perfectly available. So um, this is where you'll find yourself anyway. WooThemes.com uh, slash flex slider. Um, so, uh, in the spirit of our other jQuery plugins so far, just hit the download button and uh, wait for all the files to uh, hit your downloads folder. I'm going to decompress that. And let's see. And once again, you're presented with a folder with uh, all kinds of stuff in it. Loads of demo things, licenses, of course, and um, and the essential JavaScript as well. A uh, little more involved this time. Let me just get rid of uh, that page. Um, obviously, we need the JavaScript. So, whichever of these JavaScript files you want to grab, that's fine. Just grab that and stick it in the JavaScript folder. While we're here, I'm just going to uh, reference that at the bottom of our um, HTML index file. Uh, what's it called? Flex slider. Nice naming conventions here, making sure that we don't do anything stupid. Uh, okay, so we'll save that. That's the first step. Um, now we're also going to have to refer to some of the uh, CSS because Flex Slider does have some uh, fairly necessary uh, styles, which you can see if you open up the Flex Slider CSS in the download. Necessary styles. Um, these are necessary in order to get things working. So uh, none of these are particularly uh, style related. There are themes which are available as well, but we're going to ignore those. What we are going to need are the, the resets and let's just uh, let's keep all of that. The resets and these necessary styles which um, make sure that things run perfectly smoothly. So I'm just going to inject those into my uh, layout CSS here like that. Keeping all the comments and everything as well, which is perfectly fine. Um, but you can get rid of those if you if you want to clean things up a little more. So that's good. Now we need to uh, instantiate things, just as we have with uh, with all our other J, uh, jQuery bits and bobs. Uh, so let's see. In our whatever J JavaScript file. I'm now going to uh, set up another little hooking up thing. Hook up the flex slide. Okay, and I've got a snippet here ready to go. There we go, another document ready method there. 
with very few of the available uh, attributes listed. Uh, I've, I've, the only parameter I've, I've put in is this direction nav uh, and I've assigned that to be false because this is what determines if you're going to have those left or right arrows for navigating through your slides. I don't want those in this particular case. Um, and of course uh, it points to uh, it points to an element called flex slider which is where we're going to be um, what we're going to be using for our um, for our slideshow. Uh, it does require that you apply a markup in a, in a fairly specific way. Um, so I'll show you now uh, more or less what that looks like because what flex slider does is it takes um, list items within an unordered list assuming that the unordered list has this class name and it's those list items or the images within those list items that it uses to rotate so you've always got to make sure that you're handling uh, an unordered list and that's what's holding your slideshow so this is where we have our slider uh, currently uh, fairly empty um, so the first thing we need to do is stick a div in there with a class of flex slider so that just contradicts what I said, doesn't it? It's the URL within the containing div of flex slider that's targeted. Okay, so we'll make that nice and clean for ourselves there. Uh, now we're going to have a URL with a class of slides, which we're going to use for styling purposes. And again, it's always useful to comment your various uh, terminating tags. Um, now we want list items. And pull in two of them. I've got three images, of course, so for each of these images, I'm going to need a list item. And what I'm going to do is use a figure element, which is an HTML5 element uh, used to describe uh, media content like images. You can even uh, put video or, or audio within these uh, things as well, that sort of thing. So we're going to use a figure element within that. Uh, we're going to have uh, an image. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to source that and it is relative to this file so images and the first one is called lock nervous a scottish accent there for you uh, okay simple as that uh, put an alt tag in there of course if need be uh, oh and i should just uh, put in the link here to point to the uh, the photo June file where i got that that's uh, professionally responsible of me of course uh, okay, so then uh, that's what we're going to do. Of course, using a figure element, that means that we can also add elements such as uh, fig captions, that sort of thing, uh, which can be very useful. Uh, keeps everything very semantic. Uh, you can maybe use a fig caption for a label at the bottom of your image, something like that. Um, okay, so that's our first one. We're going to have two others, one and two. And now I'm just going to switch out the images themselves. Second one is this one of Iceland. Some nice dramatic scenery for you to enjoy while you're working. Uh, Iceland, the country there, not the supermarket chain, I don't imagine. So I'll save that. Uh, and that should be all that's necessary in order to get this thing up and running. Where's my alt tag? Wait one second, I'll just put an alt tag on these as well. Uh, okay, so that should be all that's necessary to, uh, to get this working anyway. Uh, we're going to be missing some styling, but uh, let's just open up Chrome and see what we have. Uh, okay, that's it. Uh, we have our image there, and you can see the transition working perfectly fine. And here we have our uh, little navigation anchors, which have been injected by the uh, the Flex Slider plugin. So the first thing we're going to need to do, if we look at our design here, uh, this some spacing obviously and you can see that we've styled the uh, the image uh, with a border uh, and some padding in a similar way to the way we handled our Flickr uh, images down there so that's the first thing we're going to do so jumping into our layout CSS I'm now going to put my own flex slider styles Okay, to kick things off, let's now uh, add some space to the top of our slider itself. That was the div that everything's sitting in there. Uh, so I want a margin, and of course, 
you could probably have guessed I'm going to add 21 pixels of margin top and bottom uh, there we go so that's just improved that slightly and let's see what else did we have we have the um, the images themselves actually I'm going to target all images because if we look at our example here not only does this image have the styling here but uh, our video has it and also our thumbnail images have it as well so that's going to be general styling so instead of just targeting specifically the flex slider I'm going to go above um, let's see where shall I put this below the footer above the footer fairly crucial styling this so we have our images section and firstly I'm going to put some generic styling in for our figure and six pixels of padding and then with a border of one pixel that keeps things nicely in line as well solid and that was our border background of course which gives us our uh, large band around the whole image uh, and then we're going to need to um, we're going to need to define a line height of zero just to bring that uh, actually let me just comment I'm just going to get rid of that to show you what happens without that um, very little apparently that doesn't seem to be having any problems at all uh, oh it must have been for something else I must have added that in order for the uh, for the video or something so we'll have a look at that later further down the line uh, okay so that's the figure dealt with uh, we don't have any figure captions or anything um, so actually that's looking fairly complete in actual fact yeah that looks great so now we just need to handle the, uh, the little navigation uh, links there so this does fall under our flex slider styles so having a look at so we need to know what we're going to be targeting because it's all added dynamically of course so we're looking at an ordered list called flex control nav uh, each one containing uh, list items uh, with anchors and of course the one which is active has a class of active all right so that's fairly clear this is the class name we're going to have to target so jumping back into coda I'm going to start with a width of 100 pixels. That's going to bring it across the whole width. And text align the center just to make sure it stays in the center, obviously. Uh, and then we need to tackle the list items within that. They're going to be displayed in line. I'm going to give them margins uh, between each other of 5 pixels let's see how that's affected things all right that's a good start and now let's see I want these to be little circles of course so I'm going to display those as inline block which will keep them keep them behaving like inline elements but I can still then affect the uh, the dimensions of them which is good so I'm going to apply a width of 14 pixels and of course a height of 14 pixels uh, they have a background which is that and a border of the same apparently I've defined oh, of course there's a reason for that and let's see we want a cursor of pointer whenever we hover over those and I'm going to need to ditch the text within them as well so uh, we're going to copy and paste the image replacement that we used on our logo uh, where are we bottom of our flex slider flex control now here we go that's the image replacement like so Actually, that would be a great great occasion to use um, a CSS preprocessor like Less or SAS or something where you could apply this, uh, the whole image replacement within some kind of mix-in and, and use that on everything where it's necessary. Anyway, we're copying and pasting that for the time being. Uh, so that's dealt with that. And then, of course, we're going to need a border radius. I'm going to copy and paste this. Stay so even watching me type it. 
there comes a point when it's just enough all right so that's that let's have a look and we have three little circles so now according to our design uh, which we're pretty much ignoring actually because we're using a completely different uh, slideshow uh, uh, but that's uh, not important uh, we need to highlight uh, our active links a little bit so we're just going to add a slightly different style to our active style like so and we're going to let's see class of active and we'll use the same styling whatever we define for our hover state as well like so uh, that's simply with a different background slightly lighter uh, and there we go there it is so our hover and our active both have that sort of styling so that's looking excellent and of course the whole thing as already demonstrated several times uh, is flexible uh, responsive perfect so we've come an awful long way in this uh, tutorial we've done quite a lot we've pulled in our various feeds we've uh, we've come on quite a way in terms of the styling um, obviously one one uh, blindingly obvious thing that we need to deal with is the content within the actual uh, main body of the site itself looking at our design here you can see there's quite a bit of styling still to be done with this um, that's pretty much all it is we're going to be dealing with some responsive uh, video which is quite crucial uh, otherwise uh, all that's left to be done is a great deal of styling uh, burying ourselves in CSS so um, join me in the next screencast and uh, that's what we'll deal with thanks for watching